friends, I'm your host, Reverend Simone Lord, and welcome to another episode of Get Out of Your Cage, Guides and Keys to Freedom in All Areas of Your Life. Today, I'd like to speak to you about doing something new with your life, about developing the talent that God gave you. Before we get started, though, <clears throat> I'd like to read from Isaiah 43. Now, this is a great uh, passage, scripture for restoration and redemption. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine, says the Lord. He's talking to you. When you pass through the water, I will be with you. In the rivers, you shall not drown. Whatever you're going through right now, the Lord is with you and you will not drown. When you walk through fire, hallelujah. A lot of us are walking through some fires right now, being tested. Well, I'm here to tell you, to proclaim and to declare that the Lord is with you and you shall not be burnt. You shall go through the fire and come out on the other end, unscathed, not a mark, because the Lord is with you. The flames, <clears throat> the flames shall not consume you, for I am the Lord, your God. The Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I give Egypt as your ransom. The verse that I want to bring to your attention is that God will do a new thing for you. He is able to restore you. The same God that gave, that sent Jesus to die for you is the same God that wants to do a new thing for you. Will you not see it? Will you not believe it? That he is able to do a new thing for you. That he is able to see you through high deep waters. That he is able to guide you and to bring you to a new level of freedom that you desire in your life. Because he is God and he is able. Hallelujah. So today I want to talk to you about doing new things. It says here in, in Isaiah 43 verse 19. I am doing something new. It shall spring forth for you. And you will see it. In the desert, I will make a way. In the wasteland, I will make a way. Wherever you go, I will make a way. Hallelujah. So don't despair. God is doing something new. He is going to make a way for you. And as soon as you believe it, it's going to happen. So it's all about you. Will you believe it so that it can happen? I started off with this prayer because I'm thanking the Lord for doing something new for my life also. Because I can see it. I believe it. Something new is going to happen. Not just for me. But something new is going to happen to a believer right now that's listening to me. To someone that want something new to someone that feels stagnant that feels dull that feels like life is passing them by that doesn't know what to do with their life that doesn't know what to do with the talent that god gave you something new is going to happen for you something new is about to happen so today i'd like to speak to you about inventing some things that's right you know, they say that in Israel, the, the most patterns have come out of Israel. I want to tell you that you have an invention in you. You have a book in you and you have an invention in you. There's so much that's unique and special about you that we. I just want to help you to bring it out, to let it out. That's why I wrote the book, Get Out of Your Cage. And I want you to read the book. I want you to find the book and read it. 
so that you can learn methods and ways to get out of your cage, to think outside the comfort zone and, 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 and just to release yourself, to be free. Because he that is free, God set you free, is free indeed. Hallelujah. So believe that God can set you free. Believe that God can give you wings so that you can soar like an eagle. Believe that God can remove the tiredness. And that he can give you some wings so that you can soar and do all the great things that he has called you to do. Today is the day for you to believe this. And today is the day for you to start something new. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. So the message today that God wanted me to give you was exactly that. Isaiah 43. The whole, read the whole scripture, the whole passage. Now I'd like to talk to you about some stuff that you can do for yourself with the blessing of God upon you. For example, I'm always talking about inventing things. I'm always talking about patenting things. So today I want to share with you the steps because this is something that you can do. You can take a day or two or a week, however long it takes you, take some time and really think about something that you can invent. You're going to be thinking anyway. You're going to be dreaming anyway. Why not dream big and think big? Think about inventing something that you can sell to some organization, maybe the MTA. <laughs> a lot of organizations out there. There's a lot of organizations. I say the MTA because last week's show was about doing business with the MTA and becoming DBE certified with the MTA. So there's something that you can do that you can invent, something that you do well what is your passion? What is your, what, what is your talent? Look carefully into your life and into the talent that you have and think every day of what you can invent, something that you can invent that will change the way people think about a process or a product or a service. For example, if you're an engineer, like my friend Dwight, maybe you can invent an apparatus or a, a small put a small pad or something on the glue stick like Dwight did and invented a new invention and he sold it to Elmer's the glue people there's something that you could do my friend beloved there's something that you could do there's something that you can make there's a way that you could do something that is new the the uh, patent office is looking for a non-obvious, an, inven an, an invention is not to be confused with an idea. They're looking for something non-obvious, something original, a new way of doing something, a new product that could be, that could add convenience uh, to an existing product. So there are several types of products of, um, I'm sorry, there are several types of inventions and patents. Okay, so the patent, that you're looking for is either going to be let's say uh, a design patent or a utility patent so research these things I am NOT an attorney I am a pastor I am a preacher I love business and so I do a lot of research and I want to I'm doing this to encourage you that you can meet all your goals to support yourself and your family and you can do great things for the kingdom, for the, for the Lord, for yourself and for the Lord and for your family and for your community, for the world. You are a change agent and I want to see you use your gifts. So this is why I'm telling you about these things, about how to patent something. The first step would be to go to the patent office online and the address is uh, www.uspto. Dot gov. So that's the United States Patent and Trademark Office dot gov. USPTO dot gov. So as you go there and you start, you know, reading, it's, it'll be a little daunting at first, but you'll get the gist of it. So there are two types, uh, two different types of patents that you can file. 
a provisional patent and a non-provisional patent. Okay, so the, the provisional patent is, you know, you can like mail it out. They never open it. All that does by filing the provisional patent is that it sort of uh, gives a time, a date and a time of when you sent in your invention. So that they will, you know, then you can have, you know, like a, a record that, you know, a, a claim that I send this in first. And if they open it, you know, you will, if it comes to a court ruling or determination or case, then they will open it and see that you did indeed send it out before everybody else. Now, the non-provisional patent, I like that one. It's a little hard, but that's the real patent application. That's the one that you send in when you have an invention, you fill it out. You know, it might be it might be 10 pages, it might be six pages, depending on the scope of your invention. Um, also, you, you would need to completely fill it out and send it in, explaining exactly what your invention is. With the non, with the provisional patent, you don't have to like uh, be very, very, you know, specific especially with the description and the method but the non-provisional this is it this is the real application that you would be filing to get a patent in your name okay so this is the exciting part so the first thing that they're looking for in this patent application and if you go to the uspto.gov you will find non -prov and you look for non-provisional patent, you will find the application and the guide to find an application. Read it well because it will give you all the knowledge that you need to file a proper, a proper patent application. Now, you can get an attorney. As a matter of fact, they suggest that you get an attorney to help you to file the patent application. That's up to you. It's recommended that you get an attorney to help you especially with the language and with understanding now if you don't have money for an attorney the, the there's a, a pro bono program that's really wonderful they charge like a little fee just for something small like a registration fee but depending on your income they help you file the application so that's definitely an option a suggested option so the first thing that you need to f start filling out the application, uh, it would be called is the specifications page. Okay, <clears throat> they want the title of your invention. Okay, now try not to give a trademark. You know, there's a difference between trademark and patent. So you don't want to, you know, really name an applica uh, name your product specifically. You want to say what is about. For example, if you invented the microwave, you would say, you wouldn't really per se like give it a name, the microwave, but you would say this device or this machine plugs into the wall and it heats up food and even water really, really quickly, something to that effect. So you would fine tune the title of your invention. They want it very short. Um, they don't want like a whole paragraph. They they are looking for like, you know, some a very short description uh, title Okay, then you do cross-reference to related applications So if your invention say you invented the microwave your invention is related to other inventions like let's say What is different? with uh, between the microwave and another previously invent something invented that can help people heat food up so let's say like the toaster oven. So what's the difference? So you would put here in the cross reference, the related applications, you would put the different patents that are related to your invention. So you do research to find out. As you do the research, you will be so happy because you will learn the language and how to write your own patent application. Then they're gonna ask for a statement regarding federally sponsored research or development. Are you sponsored by the government to do this to do any type of research? So whether or not, uh, you put non-applicable if you're not, and if you are, you reveal that. Okay, for everything that you that's not applicable to you, you put non-applicable. 
then you would need a brief summary of the invention what the invention provides for what it's about very short like a you know a, a, a good paragraph um, you don't want to put like an entire page here because they are going to ask you for a detailed description of the invention but you're definitely going to need to be very brief and to make a synopsis of your invention and you know what made you what problem it solves that's the gist of the brief summary what problem does it solve then you're going to need some drawings so you know you can do computer generated drawings like in word so you go to word and you uh you know you make a shape you could use uh insert shapes and you can start drawing word has the insert shape function where it puts in like cylinder or squares or rectangles and arrows so you could and circles ovals pie charts you could you could definitely do the description of your invention in word or you can draw it out it has to be really good well labeled though if you draw it out okay so they're looking for figure one two three and a description now they need a description of the drawing so in addition to the drawing you need a separate page with a description of what you just drew now you need a detailed description of the invention this is where you get into the nuts and bolts what prompted you to invent this product or service and how does it really work what's different from it what's different about it from other inventions and also what problem does it solve and what type of convenience or functionality it has that is superior or different to other inventions like it so they want to see how you have if you have improved a certain product let's say you improved the microwave let's say you did something that I threw out my microwave by the way because I don't really like microwaves I believe that they cause cancer I've done research on that and I've seen that it caused a lot of cancer in different people and um, even if you look up microwaves uh, and you do the research you see that they did a study and they gave microwave milk to babies and they didn't grow versus the baby that had breast milk or another type of milk and it was not microwaved and that baby grew so you can do your own study anyhow maybe you invented something to make the microwave better maybe even as I'm speaking now <clears throat> maybe you know of something that could make the microwave better invent it and patent it trust me I'm not going to because I really I don't I'm not technical like that but maybe somebody out there maybe you know somebody out there but who knows I'm gonna pray about it and I'm gonna see if I can invent a better microwave and I challenge you to do the same in any case if you have invented a product that is better than the microwave that could uh, be healthier I heard that the microwave got banned in Russia I don't know how true that is you research it and let me know send me a letter let me know okay so you invented this product that can help the microwave that can uh, do better help people more people will use it because it's safer you know it's no cancer causing agents and all of that no radiation radioactive uh, cells and different things so now you put all of this in here like how is it different from the microwave and what specifically in it helps to make it safer where there's no radio radioactive waves where there's no nuking of your food so you want to put that in there in the detailed description of the invention and maybe you're in uh, film and media maybe there's some apparatus that you could invent to do better film to do better you know to, to maybe there's a tripod that you could invent maybe there's a different uh, lens that you can invent there's something that you can invent if you think about inventing something every day you will invent something because where your thoughts are there your treasure lies so if you think about it all the time you will think about something that you can invent trust me on this if it's what you think about thoughts have like a, a magnet of attraction so if you think about something long enough they kind of tend to manifest claims 
Claims are the most important part of the invention. It determines whether or not you get an invention patent. If you get a patent for your invention, it is determined by the claims that you set forth in the patent application. So you wanna claim what, what the product does. Specifically, your product is different. It does X, Y, and Z. It solves the problem of the microwave. And for example, if you invent a product like the microwave, this toaster oven behind me, you know, is a good, it's a good product. You know, I think it's better than the microwave. And so this is what I use. I threw out my microwave. My kids and my husband really, you know, they, they are not for it. Me throwing out the microwave, but it's safer. And so I want to stay can cancer free. And I encourage you to do the same. I dare you to do the same. So the claims, the claims part of your application, this is the part that will uh, tell, tell the world what it is specifically that you're claiming that your invention will do differently, okay? Now you can list several claims. It doesn't have to be one claim. And the last, uh, well, actually it's not the last, but another part of the invention that's very important is the abstract. The abstract is a summary of your invention and its capabilities. Okay, it's brief. Um, they, don't, they only want one paragraph, so you make it brief and to the point. Now, you have to submit your patent application, and if it's over 138 pages, you pay extra. Okay, so I'm trying not to get too technical there. Okay, if, if it's a computer program that you wrote, then you have to put it on a disc, a DVD or a CD or something. Now, you will need a declaration for utility or design application using an application data sheet. So you fill that out. It's all, of, uh, all available at uspto.gov and you just download them. Okay, now, uh, a certification of micro entity status. This is based on your gross income. You pay a low fee not as high as everybody else who makes over, let's say, 150000 or so. I think it's a, a, around that amount. But you, you would pay a lower fee. So you want to certify that, you know, that you, you, know, you are entitled to filing a lower fee. So you fill that out. So you have the, the application, especially the fee. Now you must go online, uspto.gov, to determine what fee you would pay after you've you know, deducted all your, your discounts and your micro entity status, then you, you send in at the, you, you send in the fee with it. Now, if you file this electronically, you pay much less. So all these things have to be in PDF format so that you can file it electronically. Okay. And there you have it. There's your patent application. Not so hard as you thought it was something that you can do. We, they hope that you do it with the help of an attorney, but hey, you could do this, okay? I want to show you some inventions before we go. Now, someone invented this candle. It's a soy massage candle. I wasn't the person that invented the soy massage candle, but what I did is I invented a system. It's called the I Can System, short for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. So what my system does is I pair the I can candle. I pair it with my book. Get out of your cage. And you light the candle and you read the book. It's a system of doing something. That's different. So I just wanted to share that with you. And you can definitely order your I can system from me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But what's unique about this candle is that you massage, you can massage your feet. It's, it's, uh, it's great for softening feet and hands. So it's, it's safe to use on your skin. And I put special scents and oils in it. Well, I had it made. So I put some special relaxing scents and essential oils so that you can relax and read the book, get out of your cage. And it's motivation to go, okay? So you can send for your ICANN care package. 
Okay, my friend invented the tea of life. She is a registered nurse and she knew about this tea, Semi Contra, and that it grows wild in Jamaica and West Indies and even here. It's also called American worm seed and she invented this. She patented the box, she even has it kosher too. And, th and then she got Pfizer to make her some capsules. Now what it, it claims to reduce blood pressure, which it does because I tried it and it works just fine. Um, and it, it cleans you out, especially good for people who have worms and different little things growing in their body. So it's a good tea. I love this tea, by the way. It's a good clean out. Um, she said it's not good for pregnant women. So you got to read it. So thank you so much for viewing and we hope that you will tune in again on Saturday, next Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Until then, I love you, God bless you, and get out of your cage. It's time to live the best life that you can. Amen. Praise the Lord.